Hey guys, welcome to my stylized character rigging tutorial series. For this series I'm going to be using this beautiful Jinx model that I bought from CG Trader. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. I chose this model because if you see an arcane, this character is really um, action based and the way that she's designed itself is really good for doing action scenes but also um, a good model to base on to make a rig with um, really flexible facial controls which is what I want to do. Um, so in this video I'm going to show you how to choose a model that's good for animation and rigging uh, or edit your model so that it is optimized. And it's really important that you do this first before you start the rigging process um, for two main reasons. Um, one is it can save you a lot of time and effort during the rigging process itself and two because it can save the animators a lot of time and pain if the model is designed for animation basically. So when you're selecting a model for animation or rigging one of the most important things you have to consider is the topology and topology is basically the flow of the edges and faces and vertices around the character model um, and for f the character's head for example there's a particular topology structure that um, you gotta follow to allow it to deform and be expressive properly um, and there's a lot of good examples you can find online um, and also for the body as well um, there's a specific structure and also extra edge loops added to parts of the body that needs to bend like your knuckles or knees or elbows for example if we take a look back at the Jinx model I found there's a lot of topology issues in the face because um, I guess it wasn't like it, it's a really good model it just wasn't modeled to be animated I guess um, so I went back in and fixed up the facial topology so it's a lot more smoother and follows those edge loops that you want um, and there's a lot of issues with the the body topology as well so just for the areas that are really important like the areas that bend like the shoulders elbows knees fingers etc I went in and fixed it so that there's no issues later on like adding a couple extra edge loops on the fingers for example uh, and yeah so if you have if you're finding issues on your model you should first of all either fix it or start with a model that doesn't have those issues so that it saves a lot of pain later on when you're rigging or animating it. Another important factor you should consider before you start rigging a character is the pose of the character. There's a few popular poses that models come in. So one is the A pose, another is the T pose, and then we got the star pose. My personal favorite is the A pose for a few reasons and I'll explain why. So for an A pose we have the arms at a 45 degree angle and the legs pointing straight down. The main reason why I like the legs pointing straight down is imagine you're an animator and you get a rig with the legs out like this. And the main things you do with your legs are either walk or run. There's also other things, but let's take the example of a run cycle. You first have to bring the legs into a neutral position before you start animating. Because you, there's no way you're gonna run or walk with your legs out like this. So I, I just feel in my experience it just adds an annoying extra step for the animator which can be avoided if the legs are inwards to begin with. And sometimes in my experience when you rig a model with the, with the legs at an angle like this it can sometimes cause an issue with the knees not um, interpolating correctly. Like it can cause wonky issues where the knees go in or out like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that happens or how to avoid it but for me I usually just start with the character model legs straight to avoid that issue to begin with. And just to add to this, a lot of popular 
um, well done character rigs you can find online also does the same thing with the legs you know at a neutral pointing down position like that another main characteristic of the apos is the arms being at a 45 degree angle and I prefer this over the arms being in a T pose where the arms are out at a 90 degree angle like this the there's main two main reasons why I prefer that one is as a personal preference as an animator I feel like again it's similar to the like being angled issue where it adds an extra step in my experience so I just prefer it to be at a more neutral position like this another reason is um, it kind of stretches out the mesh around the shoulders here like that and that can make it a bit trickier when you're skinning so it's just easier to skin in my experience if it's at a more neutral position like this ideally you want the fingers to also be modeled straight like this rather than bent because if it is bent like that it just adds another step for the animator when you're animating it's always better that the like when the animator zeroes out the control it goes to a neutral position rather than an already posed position like that again another thing is it makes it easier to rig as well if the fingers are straight out because if you imagine the joints they'll come out straight like that whereas if they're bent the you have to do unique rotations for each of the fingers and it's just a bit clunkier I personally feel so I've gone in and made all those changes to the model so this is the before and this is the after as you can see the fingers are now pointing straight the legs are pointing straight down rather than an angled position and I've also gone in and made the angle of the elbow slightly straighter so that it's at a more neutral position one more thing you want to do before you start rigging is to separate the body parts for this model it came in three parts it has the hair mesh, the bomb over here, and the body mesh. When you have a model where big parts of the model is one object, or the entire model is one object, that can cause issues later on. You can save time by separating these body parts. Let's take the eyes for example. Say you have two eye joints and you want to skin each eye to those joints. This will obviously make sense later on but I'll briefly explain it. So you can either select the mesh and then go to vertex mode and then select each of the vertices of the eye and then select the joint and then do skin bind skin or if you have the eye separate to begin with you just select the eye, eye mesh and then the joint and skin bind which saves you a few steps. For the eyes, that's a simple example, but as you get to more complex body parts, like the gun, for example, or the belt, the shoes, etc., it just becomes more and more complex to vertex select. So it's much better to separate the body parts to begin with. So usually I'd go and I select the mesh, then go to mesh and separate and then that will separate the body parts into different parts like this we don't want to just hit separate and then call it a day we need to actually go through all these sub objects and make sure that they've been separated in the way that we want if we look at this shoe for example at the end of the boot over here there's this object that's been separated into several different little tiny parts and there's no functionality for them to be separate like this other than to making things overcrowded in the outliner which we don't want so we select these objects here and then I go to mesh and combine so that they've been combined into one object on the other hand there might be parts of the body that hasn't been separated like for example this shoe isn't separated from the leg I want them to be separated so that it's easier in the skinning stage so what I'll do is I'll go into face mode, I'll select this edge loop that's away from this leg and then I'll hit shift and the full stop key to grow the selection like this. So I've grown it to the point where um, the entire shoe is definitely selected. I'll control click 
the edge loops of the leg so that they're deselected like so now that I have just the shoe selected I'm gonna go to edit mesh detach and then mesh separate so now they're separate objects I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this whole body alright I've separated the body parts of the model now what I want to do is to delete the history so Maya basically stores the history of every little thing you do to meshes so once you've done editing your meshes you want to always delete the history and if you look at the outliner you'll see a lot of groups that are empty and just have a hidden transform node so that's basically the history so to delete the history I'm gonna drag select the entire model and then I'm gonna hit alt shift D so that has basically deleted the history I'm also gonna select the entire mesh and then I'm gonna do shift P so that has ungrouped all the meshes so we have these empty groups here that we don't want so I'm gonna select them and then hit delete now we have all of these different meshes that we want to properly name and group accordingly one thing you have to remember when you're naming um, different parts of the body is if you have something that you have symmetrical like left and right eye you want to name the left and right in relation to the character so this is the left eyebrow because this is on the left side of Jinx you don't want to name this right eyebrow because this is green right you want to name it left because it's left in relation to the character we want to do it like this because once you have the character rigged and you know ready to animate and the animator starts to animate the character um, there is no longer screen right and screen left that because the character is going to be translating around rotating there's no way to tell what used to be the screen right eyebrow and what used to be the screen left eyebrow but the left side of Jinx will always be the left side of her and the right side will always be the right side of her so yeah um, I'm gonna go ahead and name all these different body parts so after separating all the meshes I've named them and I've also grouped them accordingly so here we have the main group called Jinx mesh and I've separated that into head, legs, props, torso, hair and in each of that group we have the individual meshes and for some groups I have subgroups as well uh, and yeah so everything's structured neatly you might notice once you've separated all your meshes the pivots will be down here for everything so if you want to center them like how I got here you select everything and then go to um, modify and center pivot and after you center pivot for the individual meshes you might also want to go select the groups and go modify center pivot you don't really need to do this it's just that um, it's better when the pivot is in the center if, in case you want to move things around and stuff like that all right so um, that's all for preparing the mesh for rigging in the next tutorial um, in the series we'll start putting the joints in for the body thanks so much for watching